Good day everyone. For this video, we will be discussing about Baroque art. We have five um, variations of Baroque arts, which, which consists of Baroque painting, sculpture, architecture, furniture, and music. But before we discuss those five, we should know what is Baroque art. The term Baroque derived from the Portuguese Barroco, meaning a regular pearl or stone. And this term Baroque refers to a cultural and artistic movement that characterized Europe from the early 17th to mid-18th century. Baroque emphasizes dramatic, exaggerated motion, and clear, easily interpreted detail. And due to its exuberant irregularities, Baroque art has often been defined as being bizarre or uneven. Now, we'll need to discuss about the origin and key ideas of Baroque art. In the past, there have been arguments between art history scholars about Baroque art as something that existed. That is because Baroque era was very much defined by the influences of the major art movement that came before it, which is the Renaissance period. So much that so many art history scholars have argued that the Baroque art was simply the end of the Renaissance and never existed as a cultural or historical phenomenon. Others also have disagreed and argued that uh, the events of the Protestant Reformation and the devastation of the Thirty Years' War changed the way Europeans and European artists see and engage with the world shifted the direction of the art and cultures, therefore implicating a clear distinction from the Renaissance. Now, we'll discuss about the styles and characteristics of Baroque art. The Baroque art movement had no real directive or specific school driving it. Instead, it consisted of many great schools and artists across Europe throughout the 150 or so years of the Baroque era encompassing a wide range of styles. Additionally, the quantity of genius level artistry coming from different countries, schools, styles and fields injects an added level of subjectivity to what Baroque may mean for an observer of the art movement. The best way to approach the mapping of Baroque art characteristics is therefore the interaction between specific schools, artists, and artist, artistic mediums. Generally, the main features of Baroque painting manifestations are drama, deep colors, dramatic light, sharp shadows, and dark backgrounds. The difference between Renaissance art and the Baroque arts is that Renaissance art aimed to highlight the calmness and rationality, while the Baroque artists emphasized stark contrasts, passion, and tension, often choosing to depict the moment preceding an event instead of its occurrence. And that is all for the introduction of Baroque arts. Next up is um, the first type of Baroque art, which is the Baroque painting. And we shall proceed to the next reporter, Miss Devi Bagarino. Miss Devi, please take it away. So now I am going to introduce you about Baroque painting. This is the, uh, the most prominent Baroque painters originated from Netherlands, Italy, and Spain. They were concerned with the human subjects or subjects and depicted similar scenes. Their lessons, spheres of power still dominated the arts of directions and their culture, and accordingly, the most commissions were portraits of royals, religious scenes, defections of royal life, and society. However, with the Baroque era came a rise in history and landscape paintings, as well as portraits, uh, gen genre scenes, and still lives. The next slide, I will be, um, we will be uh, showing you what are the uh, the types of examples of Baroque era paintings. First, we have the anatomy of lessons of Doc Dr. Nicholas Talk by Rembrandt, Apollo and Daphne by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, 
Boy with a Basket of Fruit by Caravaggio. So here are the list of examples of work painting together with their painters. So now I am going to further discuss about the first painting that I have shown you in the last slide. So we have here the Anatomy of Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Stout by Rembrandt. This oil painting made in 1963 by Rembrandt is a famous example of Dutch Baroque art. The scene depicted in this art the, in this work is a public dissection of an executed criminal that was conducted by Amsterdam Guild of Surgeons. The same year the painting was made. The dramatic light, theoretical composition, and the figure's allusion to Christ impacted the tra trajectory of Dutch painting and the time that characterized as its work of the Baroque period. Second, Apollo and Daphne by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Carved from marble, this sculpture by Bernini is an important example of three-dimensional Baroque artwork. As the primary sculpture during the Baroque period, Bernini is recognized for his ability to portray narrative tension by combining classic forms of and techniques with attention to emotions and movement. Apollo and Daphne, completed in 1625, represents the movement of Ovid metamorphosis when Daphne changes into a tree. The action and psychological distress depicted in this artwork make it a significant example of Baroque sculpture. A painting working at the early end of Baroque period, Caravaggio moved away from the styles of mannerist and pioneer his own combination of naturalist depiction of direct observation and the use of tenebrism, a technique of painting employing extreme lights and darks with a few middle values. Religious painting and portraits like a boy with a basket of fruit are characteristic of this style and demonstrates Caravaggio's influence on other Baroque artists. For the Baroque sculpture, many great Baroque artists were architects as well as sculptors, and common traits can be seen in their obra. A case similarity is the rejection of straight line resulting in increasingly pictorial sculptures where movement and expression are emphasized. The Baroque sculpture was primarily concerned with the representation of biblical scene spurred by the church but also by the beliefs of the sculpture themselves. As many work on uncommissioned portrayals of biblical epics as well, be it scenes from the Old or New Testament, the desire of most Baroque sculpture was to portray pathos as well as movement. So as you can see in this slide, these are the examples of the Baroque sculpture. The first one is the Apollo and the Pin. The second one is St. Andrew. The third one is the Aeneas, Anchises, and Ascanius. The first one is the Apollo and the Pin. Apollo and the Pin is a life-size Baroque marble sculpture by Italian artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini. He executed between 1622 and 1625 housed in the Galleria Borghese in Rome. The work depicts the climax of the story of the pin and Puebius in Ovid's Metamorphosis. This charming myth talks about the platonic love of God Apollo for the beautiful name the pin. It is said that the pin was the first love of Apollo, but unfortunately, the girl never expanded his love. It was not usual or possible for a nymph or a mortal woman in the Greek mythology to resist the love of a god. But the pin did so, and in fact, she lost her life trying to escape this love. Our second Baroque sculpture example is the Saint Andrew. Saint Andrew by François de Quesnoy was explicitly created for one of the niches at the crossing of Saint Peter Basilica. This artistic marble representation of St. Andrew is one of the four larger-than-life statues which frame the Baldacchino in the transept of St. Peter's Basilica. Each depicts a venerated relic which, which at the time was the property of the Pope and St. Peter's. 
the statue of Andrew was commissioned to honor the relic of the Apostle Skull. For our last Baroque sculpture example is the Aeneas, Anchises, and Ascinius. The Aeneas, Anchises, and Ascinius is a sculpture by the Italian artist named Gian Lorenzo Bernini. He created circa in 1618 to 1619, housed in the Galleria Borghese in Rome. The sculpture depicts a scene from the Aeneid where the hero and Aeneas leads his family from burning Troy. Hello everyone, I hope you feel good. I am Gracial Faith Baronki, so now I'm going to share with you one of the style of Baroque art, the Baroque architecture. Architectural style originating in late 16th century Italy and lasting in some regions, notably Germany and colonial South America until the 18th century. It had its origins in the Counter-Reformation, when the Catholic Church launched an overly emotional and sensory appeal to the faithful through art and architecture. Mm, wow, amazing! Complex architectural plan shapes, often based on the oval, and the dynamic opposition and interpenetration of spaces were favored to heighten the feelings or motion and sensuality. So now, try to look at these three pictures. These are examples of Baroque architecture. The San Carlo El Quattro Fountain in Rome, St. Peter's Square in Vatican, and St. Paul's Cathedral in London. When someone asks, what's San Carlo El Quattro Fountain all about? Anyways, this architecture designed by one of the leading Baroque architects, Francesco Borromini. The San Carlo El Quattro Fountain, also known as the Church of St. Charles at the Four Fountain, is one of the finest examples of Baroque architecture. The Roman Catholic Church was built between 1638 and 1646 when it was consecrated, while the facade was completed in the 1670s by Borromini's nephew Bernardo. So you heard it, guys. How many years before they finished this architecture? So now, let's move on to the second examples of Baroque architecture, the St. Peter's Square from Vatican. Wow. The St. Peter's Square and its imposing colonnades with 140 statues of saints are the work of Gay and Lorenzo Bernini. Who was the next to Francesco Borromini, one of the most prominent architects of the Baroque era. He also built the left fountain largely, following the design of the earlier Carlo Modernus fountain to create symmetry. In the center of the square stands an ancient Egyptian obelisk, which was erected in its current site in 1586 by Domenico Fontana. Now let's go down to the last examples of Baroque architecture, the St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Ooh, London! Anyways, this architecture built on the site of an earlier church that was severely damaged in the Great Fire of London in 1666. The St. Paul's Cathedral is widely considered as one of the finest examples of English Baroque architecture. The design is the work of celebrated English architect Sir Christopher Wynne, who was also commissioned to rebuild over 50 churches that were damaged in the Great Fire and many notable secular buildings across England from 1710, which completed until 1962. St. Paul was the tallest building in London. Amazing! Hello everyone, my name is Kim Kyo Chong. We're here for the... For the Baroque furniture, Baroque furniture pieces had a very elaborate ornamentation, plenty of details, and the designs featured an exuberant and sometimes exaggerated decoration, with the de details integrated with harmony and balance in symmetrical compositions. Some common elements included twisted columns, pedestal feet, and heavy moldings.
this is the examples of baroque furniture an example of an exuberant style so this is the two example the baroque cabinet with gobelets and the baroque console here in our slide we're going to talk about the baroque cabinet with gobelets as you can see here in the picture this is the baroque cabinet with gobelets elegant materials imported from asia were common thanks to the establishment of regular trades roads exotic woods were exclusive and highly demanded especially ebony and mahogany which were used in many pieces however also local woods such as oak walnut and chestnut were widely used the inlays were a recurring element and were made by inserting veneers of contrasting contrasting colors and sometimes different materials occasionally furniture had a marble slab created by mixing contrasting shades so we're here at the last slide example of baroque furniture which is the baroque console baroque console the most iconic elements of baroque style are the gilded finish made these exuberant symbols of luxury were associated with wealth and european courts were decorated with golden furniture such as versailles and louis the 14th court the motifs for decoration were usually stylized foliage and geometric with spirals and curves but the corners and the top of the legs were usually adorned with cherubs animals and mythical creatures thank you for listening baroque music now the baroque era was a time of musical innovation now today baroque music is a world famous for the german composers george frederich handel and johann sebastian bach but at the time italian composers dominated the scene their legacy lives on through the music of antonio vivaldi claudio Monteverde, and arcangelo corelli and their expressive scores in order to create music on par with the classical Greek and Roman dramas of the past, Italian composers implemented new ways of playing and introduced new aspects of composition. They just um, create another technique. No? Um, seeking dynamics and emotion in the place of regal staticness, they develop a new musical language no, that, that enable the great dramatic interpretation. Most of this musical language is still used to this day in also forms such as cantata, concerto, sonata, sinfonio, and opera originated in the Baroque period. Here there are the three pictures of the three great composers from the Baroque era. The first image is an, as a portrait of Claudio Monteverde. The second image is, Arca, is Arcangelo. Corelli. And the last image you can see is a portrait of Antonio Vivaldi. And now we will tackle about these great composers of the Baroque era. First is Claudio Monteverde, which is one of the most significant composers of his time. In 1592, he became Suonatore di Vivola or a violin player and played for Duke Vincenzo I of Mantua. Monteverde was dissatisfied, so after the Duke's death in 1613, he accepted the position of Maestro di Capella of St. Mark's in Venice. He composed some of the most influential early Baroque pieces. Some of his most notable compositions are Vespro della Beata Vergine, ambitious work for soloists, choir, and orchestra, 
as well as the earliest opera known today, such as Orfeo and El Encronazione di Popea. Next is not only a famous composer, but also a virtuoso violinist, and that is Arcangelo Corelli. Corelli is well known among violinists for his style of playing that influenced violin technique for centuries. Now, after 1675, he worked for some of the most important music patrons in Rome, including Queen Christina of Sweden. He was very famous in Rome where he was accepted in high aristocratic circles as well as much of Europe. And he is the first composer to gain um, international acclaim. And his works include five books, collecting violin sonatas, and 12 violin concertos. And his overall body of work includes 48 trio sonatas, 12 violin and continuous sonatas, and 12 concerti grossi. Next is another great composer of the Baroque era, which is Antonio Vivaldi, a virtuoso violinist who is considered one of the most important Baroque composers. He was influential for the whole of Europe. He composed many concertos as well as chorales and more than 50 operas. He, co he composed most of his work when he was associated with the Ospedale della Pieta, a Venetian orphanage and a convent with the music school in around 1704. This, cons I mean, this institution provided excellent music education creating professional opportunities for female musicians, which was rare or non-existent at the time. Vivaldi's compositions include almost 500 concertos, 46 sinfonias, 70, 73 sonatas, and etc. And that is all for Baroque Arts. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.